You're listening to Articulate with your hosts, Kevin Kramer and Sean Gillespie. Your go-to guys for art tips, techniques, and general artist ramblings. Presented by drawingandcoloring.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Articulate, the podcast where we talk about everything art and this is Kevin Kramer. And with me, as always, is the Shono. And we are going to talk about... What are we talking about today? We're going to talk about this! A little bit of flesh tone. Are we? Yeah, a little bit of flesh tone. We're going to talk about flesh today. Flesh, that sounds... Flesh! It sounds so meaty and gross when you say it like that. Flesh. I don't like that word, actually. Yeah, I don't either. But we're going to be using it a lot in this podcast. How about we talk about skin tone? Skin tone? It doesn't have as much... It doesn't impact. sound as professional. No. Hmm. So we're going to talk about flesh tone. Okay, we'll talk about flesh tone. Flesh tone, skin tone. And what are we talking about about those? Well, first off, uh, we're going to talk about there's a lot of uh, a lot of people don't know what colors to mix to make a good flesh tone, so we're going to cover that. Okay. Um, we're also going to talk about some dangers and pitfalls of yeah. uh, flesh tones because a lot of people think that um, that basically you need to mix up a good flesh tone and slather it on and there you're done and that's peach. yeah peach you gotta uh, this dude's a peach peach crayon yeah which is ridiculous um yeah. so we're gonna talk about why that's a bad idea you can blame crayola for <laughs> yeah that. exactly and uh but we're also gonna talk about um flesh tones in black and white drawings which is gonna be more your territory and i think that'd probably be a good way to start yeah uh, this podcast don't you i think? believe so because I, I mean that's where you start all your drawings where, really. yeah hey you hey. can't draw color unless you master black and white well, well, I don't know that that's true. Some, some would agree. <laughs> All right. Some but it's a good me. idea. You definitely get an idea for tone and, and shading right. when you're doing that. Because when you're drawing a black and white image of somebody, you really get an idea for these shadings that's underneath the neck as well as right. uh, the, around the eye socket and things well, like that. For me, I think if you don't know how to depict tone, tonal range in mm-hmm. black and white, then you're going to struggle with color no matter Absolutely. what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, do, drawing it in black and white would be a huge benefit. If nothing else, then you learn that there are different values within exactly. the human face. And There's, this goes for whether you're, you know, any ethnicity. I mean, this is not right. uh, something specific to any ethnicity. Right. There's so, also there's also a technique where you draw out the the black and white tones and then you put the color over it. Okay. And I can't remember what the and to determine that is, but I'll look it up. Huh. Yeah, that's interesting. It's yeah. actually it sounds it gives like a, a lot. Of it gives a lot more depth. Oh, does it? Hmm. That makes sense. Is this just drawing? You do this, or you, um, it's a painting it, technique? You, I've seen it in painting, but I've it's, heard, I've seen it's, it in painting. Yeah. It's, where it's it's also a technique in it's Grizz Grizzali Grizzale Grizzalo. I don't know. I never did know how to say it. Yeah, there's it's, so many words in art that are difficult to say because usually they're in French or Italian. If you read it out in a horrible English accent, it would look like Grizzali. 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 There's some Grizzali going on in this here painting. It was actually, I found it in one of my color pencil right. books. Oh, okay. You no, know? I've actually, yeah, I've seen that in a book on painting before right. now that you mention it. Although the one I was looking at, it wasn't talking about flesh tones in particular. It was just talking about, like, they were painting a boat, I think. In the yeah, one it I was more of a technique to right. give it more depth and dimension right because it was starting off with the gray tones with the color pencils and okay. then you layer the color on top and one of the i think the important thing to remember when painting flesh or even drawing flesh is to remember that it's not all one color uh you know you're like True. well i am a white man so right. i will paint him white and it's like no yeah. No. Take that picture and make it black and white. Right. And you'll see that there's this huge sun, range huge of things. Especially of like with me, I got the five o'clock shadow. Yeah. And, and you can you, know. you can check out that little picture behind you a little bit. Yeah. Just oh, scoot yeah. over. Yeah, this is a great example. That Whoop. is Kevin's been working on a picture of the Shano been back when he had a mustache. Yeah, you can see a peeking yeah. out of the we'll corner. See the there. Little mustache <laughs> peeking. But you can see that the, the tonal range. Very there. subtle tones in there. Yeah. And if I tried to make that in color yeah, it would be a nightmare. I yeah, you couldn't do it all in one one just color. one blanket color. And another peach? important oh. thing to remember though is the skin is really difficult to, to paint in color because not only is skin translucent, mm-hmm. uh, you can see the veins underneath it, but it's also reflective right. of the light. And this uh, again, uh, you know, the the rules we're laying down today go for all ethnicities. All right, because I feel like we need. I mean, because you can't talk about skin tones without talking about. Well, I mean, each one is going to have its unique challenges. Right. But, I mean, you're obviously going to use um, more raw umber and things like that with somebody who's a little more tan. But right. 
those same colors you're going to use in lesser value for somebody who's pale. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like in the cheeks are flush or anything like that. Not only that, but an important thing to remember is that not only are you going to have, you don't want to use like a banner color for one person because like even, even within one person, you don't want to just use one color. Right. I guess because like me, for example, my arms are very tan. Right. And Variations. my neck is a little red. Come on, my red neck. But my stomach very pale. Does not see a lot of the day. Then get a lot this of stomach. Sun. Does this? I keep this hidden. Is there a reason? I well, I <laughs> like I like my ladies to know that this does that these, this does not everybody sees this. This is for this, your eyes only, my this dear. Is off limits. This is off limits to everybody but you. Keep All that right, in this mind. just got creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so so when you. Yeah, what? Why? What? Why? But <laughs> let's talk a little bit about what makes some good colors uh, to use in a flesh tone um, uh, with oil paint. <laughs> let's please right, let's, do that. Let's get on subject here. Okay. Um, so some good colors to use uh, with oil paint in particular is going to be a, um, a yellow okra. A tyx- ochre? Ochre? I'd say ochre. Ochre? ochre? Not, it's not okra. That's like food. Okay, ochre. Yeah. I'm hungry. Okay. Right, what can I say? I'm hungry, and I'm from Louisiana. I want yeah. some okra in my gumbo. You got one. <laughs> that's right. one strike. <laughs> All right, one strike. I'm out. Trompe l'oeil and uh, chiaroscura. You start getting into all those words, man. too many words. Yeah, chiaroscura. I yeah, looked that one up on definition.com. Uh, they got the app, and you get and it just you, says it. where it says it. And I'm like, wow, that is not how I thought that word was said all this time. Yeah. I always kind of cough through it. Chiaroscura. Yeah, Kira-scura. but now it's like chiaroscura. Yeah, yeah, which that's not how it's... it's Spanish. Yeah. Uh, is it? I, I think thought it was a Spanish a, version. Yeah. I thought it was Italian. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it is. I don't know. It is Italian. I don't know. I always assume. I think it's both. I think it's the same <laughs> so, way okay. in both languages. It's all languages. It's, it's the you know, universal word. Get off subject again here, True. Kevin. True. So anyway. So Shady now. Some, still... Yeah. Some yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. <laughs> yellow ochre. Uh, titanium white. Mm-hmm. Uh, ultramarine. Blue. Blue, but ultramarine blue. Ultramarine. Well, this is a green. <laughs> and uh, and crimson. Those are pretty much your four colors. And, and you can use some uh, raw sienna and, and burnt sienna and burnt umber yeah. in there as well. Um, but those colors mixed together are going to give you some really rich, good-looking flesh tones. Well, I know there's, like we were talking about the color pencils, mm-hmm. and there's uh, the obviously the oil paints and all the different types of paints. They have... Mm-hmm. Sometimes in the stores bundles that have the they portrait, do. like portrait yeah. colors in there. Yeah. What's the? And okay, you're, yeah, you're going a different. I thought you were going to say that there are. You can get some pre-mixed flesh tone colors. Well, there is that, but there's which like I don't the ones recommend that are, ever, ever, ever portrait. doing that. They're specifically for portraits, and they yeah, have like these the, certain yeah. colors in them. Even those I find still don't. No, they still don't get it because all of the right as colors. we were saying, you know, your skin is translucent, so somebody who is like pale like me is gonna you're gonna be see the veins in my hands and things right. like that then you may blue need to veins. use blue underneath and the good thing with the oil paint is you can layer things so that you can have those on the bottom layer right. and then you go over them with a top layer yeah. and you you know you get that that depth where it's literally underneath the skin of the paint yeah so it kind of gives it that cool effect but also you know have got this reflective thing so like look at me and i'm in this hot sweaty studio so i've got some you know, <laughs> reflection from right there. Oh, there's a good reflection. That is a wow. Yeah, look at that. That's like a receding <laughs> That's like spot. A burning. But yeah, woo. But yeah, you can see, uh, or unless you're listening, in which case you can't see, but imagine should, what I'm should showing be you. Watching. You should be watching. Why are you not watching? But uh, <laughs> but you've got these these highlights that you might just use a straight titanium white on right and then if i was outside and the sun was setting and then it was you know beautiful yellow and i was surrounded by yellow well my skin would be right it would take know, up that yeah, environment it would, yeah it would the reflected reflect light that. because you wouldn't i would not look the same in this studio as i would outside under a blue sky or anywhere else i mean right so well let's take an, that well that goes into kind of uh, you, you just can't paint one color for every skin tone. Well, right. That's what I'm saying. Is you don't want to buy a pre-mixed skin tone. Because right. it's, you know, if you do, you get one. You're just going to be dabbing it here and there when that skin tone happens to match a tiny, you know. Well, and it's, it's just not worth your time. It's, it's like if you're doing black and white, too. If you mm-hmm. just do one straight color or you do one nice gradient of tone, just go from one to the mm-hmm. other, it's going to look flat. Right. You can't have just one color across anything. Mm-hmm. If you took that picture of you in the back there... Mm-hmm. And just did 
just a flat middle tone, it would have no life. Right. Yeah, it needs to have contrast to make it pop and give it that three illusion of three dimensionality. Right. And then you That's... also have the uh, the issue of um, where I forgot what I was about to say. <laughs> and there's an issue. That's the issue right there. There was it was in my head, and then it went away. Um, no, but you you've got the the. With the flesh tone and you're painting on the flesh. But you've got the different medium that affects differently too. Like oil paint is going to behave totally different than acrylic, right. for example. So acrylic, you might be able to use uh, some mid-tones, but then kind of like lay down a mid-tone and then go back over that with your dark uh, browns and then kind of blend it back into a highlight so that you're starting off with a mid or middle range, then going dark and fading it into light. You're adding the highlights and the darks. Now that's not a bad way to do it, but with acrylics, but you can't do that with oil paint. Well, what it, what what about when you create those underpaintings that are in like those brown tones and things? Those are yeah. like really a lot of old masterworks used right. to do that. Yeah, so. but then that's, those cases you're creating that that contrast is going to be underneath there, so right. you're laying it. Yeah, that, what I'm talking about is like if you did have a flat flesh tone that you wanted to use, which may not be a good idea but in but with acrylic you could lay down just one flat flesh tone and then go back on top of that and layer your paint to do okay. it because with acrylic you can work from it's light like to dark tone. yeah you work light to dark whereas uh with oil. Uh, oil you more you would tend to work dark to light more often okay um so you've kind of got that and plus with oil paint it's takes so long to dry that unless you waited two weeks or a week, then you're, it you're yeah, it would just mess it up and it would just begin to get real muddy. It would yeah. muddy, yeah, and not but not in a good way. Right, not not, not crisp, yeah, not no vibrant colors. Right, and then, which is what you want. You want pure vibrant colors as opposed right. to just it all muddled up and just yeah, mm -hmm. because then it looks like you don't know what you. And do. that's kind of that's what like, you do when I. Feeling. That's what I do when I do the. Um, the black and white portraits too mm -hmm. is the more I can break down the colors into uh, just separate contrasts, mm -hmm. the more I can get like a dark, a distinct dark, a middle tone, and a light. That's when it really has a lot more power behind right. it too, and it goes with just the way your eye works. So you could just mm -hmm. it brings them all together on right. its own. So whatever's the closest to the light is going to have the high, the brightest, you know, most pure white or the right. yeah best highlight. Yeah, which I mean, again, I mean, you can see if you're watching the video, yeah. you can see right now, you know, I've got a, a almost pure white highlight right there, but then right here, you know, in my mouth and in the corner of my mouth here, yeah. it's, and, and in my eye is almost just a burnt umber, you right. know, it's almost just black almost. Yeah, if you were drawing that in black and white, it would be black. Yeah, if you were, yeah. It would yeah. probably be the darkest black yeah, in the be. picture. Yeah, it would be. But, but in a painting, you would you wouldn't use black, so you would use right. uh, like if burn you, umbers. Yeah, a really good way to even because that that is probably one of the hardest things to do is to go from uh, if you're going to draw any kind of portrait mm -hmm. from if you reverse it if you take a color picture and you go black and white mm -hmm. you can see how the tones work better uh -huh. and then you can get more of a contrast and value of the way the colors actually create those tones and values and that's actually a good point and that it, it would be worth your while uh to take a painting that you've done too and take a black and white photo of it or yeah. you know take a picture Just of it, it and then and make white. it black and white so that you can see whether or not it has a big tonal range yeah because a lot of times with color it's difficult to detect the tonal range yeah that's whereas that's why know, i was saying when yeah. if you start with black and white you yeah, get a better, you get a better yeah. idea of how the yeah. how they actually work and how they come together absolutely and then but cuz then when you go in the color you have to know all of that tonal range and all of that and how that works mm -hmm on top of how the color works right. specifically in its own exactly. right. And, and that just is another level of detail. And with flesh tones, I mean, you're going to be using colors that you would never think that you would use. For example, you're going to be using greens right. and blues. But never seen a green dude walking down the street. No. But if you look at your face really close. There is definitely green. Yeah, I can yeah. see some green in your face right I see, now. I see green in your face. <laughs> green. <laughs> Friggin. Yeah. Jolly green giant over here. Yeah. You got blue too. Yeah. And yeah, red. blue, lots of blue, surprising amount of blue. And that I'll, really did surprise and, me when I yeah. started drawing color yeah. in flesh tones yeah. too. Yeah, amazing amount of blue. It's more blue than you think. Yeah, blue and pink. A lot blue. of blues and pinks and reds and whites and, and browns. I mean, it's about all the colors of the rainbow you really... and all the people of the world. And it's yeah, beautiful. And we, we all live together. together. Yeah. And then we sing. Wonderful. And then we sing the kumbaya. But seriously, and also, uh, you know, and, and 
to get a little yeah, get a little kumbaya here. Yeah. As you yeah, a little bit. I mean, as you <laughs> yeah, I'm about to. Let's get a little kumbaya. It's about to happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> but as you start painting uh, flesh tones and you start painting uh, different ethnicities, you really learn how that, you know, it's... They're all like the it's, same. Yeah, it is all the same. It's yeah. just one person might have a little bit more raw sienna, but, you know, the, the difference is nothing. There's no yeah. difference. The no same. difference, people. Made up we of all the same. Are the same. And, yeah, you know, seriously. Yeah. And uh, so... I think that's interesting because you'll, I'll actually end up using a lot of times uh, if I'm painting an African American person, I'll use a just a regular flesh tone that I would use uh, in a white person. Quite a bit of it, as a matter of fact, yeah. just with a darker shadow in the shadowed areas, yeah. and that'll and you know that it's an African American just because. Right. Of yeah. The I mean, if you do any kind of black and white drawing, mm -hmm. you you don't just pick the darkest color and then go fill in skin tone. It's not all a dark color. It's the right. same type. If you take the color away, that's why. I, that's again why I go with the black and white. Is if you take the color away from any image, they almost all have the same tonal value. Mm -hmm. It's just right. in different levels. In different in levels. Areas of the yeah. So it would be a heightened level of contrast, maybe, or, right. or well, the mid range is yeah, it would just be heightened. Right. Whereas, and then if you have like a very, very, you know, like I think of. Uh, renaissance paintings where it was very popular like the women that were soft. very pale yeah. and very soft and and kind of chubby kinda and that was kind of like the attractive thing is yeah. like the paler and chubbier you were then almost radiated the, yeah then, so much it was white. i mean that was you know i feel like that's harder to paint a lot of times than yeah. somebody who's like ripped and tan because then you can have this this stark contrast with the muscles and all that, and you get yeah. this range. Shadows. And, yeah, and you have these shadows, and it's it's a lot easier to do, for me at least, than these subtle, subtle variations of white, almost blue, uh, yeah. for some of those women in the Renaissance. I mean, they were just it's, pasty. They were like, my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what know. a stomach looks just like. bringing it back to that. I don't know what your stomach looks like, <laughs> but I can imagine. It's horrible. It's probably sort of similar the horror the horror no i don't know but anyway the point is is flesh tones can be very intimidating but i think that the only reason they're intimidating is because people feel like they need to mix a flesh tone that covers the entire face right. you know, or the entire thing which one you don't need all. to do yeah they think that oh well if i don't get this one color right it's all it's not going to look right and right. you're going about it all wrong there are so many thousands of variations and shading i don't know yeah. i'm just throwing that number out there thousands could be hundreds it depends mm -hmm. on your picture really true um but yeah just all these variations that go into a single work that uh, you know i hate to use the word synergy yeah, but you know, they as you work. step away, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's that it, it's all these variations in tone that, as you step away, become one. Right. I and think that's then, really the yeah. key with color, and that's that's really one of the struggles with color is because when you're just doing black and white, like I do mostly, mm -hmm. you can. It's a lot easier to see those tones and the gradations, mm -hmm. but when you add the color again, it just makes all those gradations that much harder. It does to look at, mm -hmm. and then when you step back. You have to you have to know how the colors work together mm -hmm. to make them blend when you step back. Right, and that's really the difficult part. That's yeah. why you kind of get into people making those one for all colors, and it's just like, oh right. yeah, the peach color goes here, and this right. goes here, and I don't. Why does it look flat? Why is it? And we should actually this would be a good chance to challenge our listeners. Oh yeah, yeah, into uh, into testing this out. So if say if you want to uh, have a pink in in the skin mm -hmm. instead of Mixing a pink and putting it in there, try laying down with a dry brush or something rough, just some a layer of red, and then just some white in there too, you know, and just some oh, white just on mix top it on of it. The yeah, yeah, just mix it on the canvas, yeah. but leave some of the under some of the pure color yeah. there. And then step back and and do that, you know, all over, and then step back and see if it blends or not, yeah. you know, and try. Now, it I don't. Out. I don't know if that works. Well, I don't know if this works with color too much in painting, but when you step back from any kind of image, just in general, if you squint your eyes, mm -hmm. yeah, that's actually that does work. Yeah, that's a very good together. way because that basically you're diffusing the image and making it muddled right. so that you can see strips oh, away this the is, detail, yeah, gives yeah. you that tonal range. Yeah, absolutely. And another good thing to do. Um, particularly with your black and white drawings, mm. is to flip the image upside down. Oh, because, or, or in like a mirror. Yeah, or in a mirror, because yeah. then you're going to get, 
you're going to look at it as its purest shapes and right. its purest tones rather than actually looking at it as a person. Right, gets because, into that yeah, mental flip-flop thing. Exactly, because a lot of times with art, and then the biggest challenge that you have to overcome is drawing or painting uh, what you know versus what you see. You, what yeah. you need to do is draw what you see uh, yeah. as opposed to what you know. And a lot of times we have these built in, well, you know, Kevin is is this color, so I'm just going to paint Kevin this color. And it's like, no, yeah. that's that's not what you see. That's yeah. what you know. I, I, I refer to that as just painting icons from like third grade. Mm-hmm. Like You know what a chair looks like in third right. grade, and you never really learned how to draw a chair, right. so you just draw that one thing right. every single time. And that's not what you want to do. You want to draw what you see, and especially with like hands and things, which this is a whole other podcast here. Yeah. But so many times you're not going to see all the fingers, Yeah. but if somebody draws it, they'll have you know, all the fingers there because I know right. that I have five fingers and I know, you know, and so. Oh, it looks like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that doesn't look natural and it doesn't look real. And the yeah. same can be applied to flesh tones. If you yeah. draw what you know and not what you see, yeah. it's not going to be accurate. It's not yeah. going to be right. So, And you can even, <laughs> if you're feeling adventurous, oh, yeah? jump, not, don't even use flesh tones. And that would be another good challenge to our artists out there. Oh, is so. Try doing a... a monochromatic you know blue like picasso in his blue period or yeah. oranges just try doing a warm color of of yellows oranges and reds and see yeah. what that looks like that's, you know that's a really good it's, way to learn tone right. yeah it's going to be tone and it's still going to look like a person and it's still going to look like that and i imagine you're going to find yourself with an image that looks like maybe it's just somebody watching a sunset and you'll be like oh but i didn't even use any flesh tone right well, you don't have to yeah because the outside source right. of light is, is projecting its own yeah. color on too right because that's one thing you have to take into account exactly like the lighting in here is white lighting mm-hmm. if we change these to just the overhead lighting which is yellow right we would look a lot more yellow we look a lot more yellow mm-hmm. a lot more oranges mm-hmm. And that's something. We look a little jaundice, and then probably and that so. where your liver fails, and you, yeah, you, you just get, get yellow. yellow. Yeah. yeah, which is why we have these fancy lights that's right. to keep us pretty mm. yeah, as much as possible. Stop that. All right. So <laughs> I think I'll never do that. Was that uh, what was the challenge there? Because the challenge is the challenge is to paint a portrait without using any flesh tone at all. Okay. Or browns, I would say, without using any any browns or wow. flesh tones. Just use just use either warm colors, red, uh, yellow, and orange. Okay. Or uh, or cool colors, uh, blue, green. So no specific like out of the pack and browns. Warm. Yeah, yeah, no out of the package brand. Just as a challenge, just to see what you get. Okay. You know? Because I think you're going to end up with, it's still going to look like a person, and it's not going to look like an alien from outer space right. if the rest of your environment that you paint around that person is those similar colors. Yeah. And I think a, another good, um, not a challenge, but more just a test or mm-hmm. a skill to work on is just take a picture of yourself in mm-hmm. the mirror and then... Just uh, not in the mirror, but just take a picture of yourself, print right. it out, black and white, mm-hmm. and color, and mm-hmm. then just study the differences there. Yeah, even put them like a, if you have Photoshop and a scanner, even just you know, or you know, I guess you need a scanner nowadays. No. Well, Grandpa Sean showing his age. Yeah. Oh, okay. You got your digital camera. Yeah. No scanner necessary, but yeah, just play with the you know, change the color tones to all magenta or cyan, and yeah. see what you get there, and see how that affects the thing. So. Look with your eyes, not with your mind. I think is that's the really key. That's the, the, key. Uh, the key point in this is any skin tone that you try to paint is going to be consisting of every color in the rainbow. Every color. And it can't be just marginalized to right. peach, brown, or... Right. And no doubt you will be, like, a majority of the time, you know, in an interior setting and things like that, you are going to be focusing on browns tones of brown right yeah Yeah. and browns reds and a little bit of blue you know all that very rarely you're going to need like a bright bright blue and a bright bright red and you know i mean you're you're not going to need this stream but yeah there's it's the key with the flesh tones is subtlety Subtlety. nail on the head there subtlety subtlety in color so yeah I think that is a I think pretty that's flesh good tones. analysis of flesh so, tones and how to get them. Let's just do those uh, those four colors that you need one more time if you do want to mix a flesh tone. But again, if you do this, don't use this flesh tone as a, just a banner all over the face, uh, you know, uh, flesh right. tone. Uh, use yeah. it for sparingly. Um, but that's going to be uh, yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. Ochre. That's what I said. Yeah. I think I said it that time. Yellow ochre. And... <laughs> Titanium white. Titanium white. Ultramarine blue. 
ultramarine blue and crimson crimson red red yeah yeah and you can also um use some burnt sienna in there too or raw sienna sorry raw sienna you can use burnt sienna too is sienna really it's kind of like a, it's kind of brown they have burnt sienna they have burnt everything it's true they got burnt jambalaya I don't know. I need to stop. All right. I don't know why I'm doing that today. I don't know what. Uh, all all right. right, folks. So there's your challenge. There's your uh, just, well, I guess, way of thinking through any picture yeah. you're really painting. Really? Whether and, it's flesh tones or not. And they should email us you should probably the should. results. Yeah. Yeah. Send us a picture of your painting and you these know? challenges. I gave you two challenges. Yeah. One to paint uh, a person without using any monochromatic browns. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, sort of. But, I mean, you can use blues and greens. Right. Yeah, that's not monochromatic, though. <laughs> no? No, not if you're using green. If it was all blue, it would be. Right. Yeah, but, well, I mean, you could do... Uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Pick blue, paint it all blue, green, paint it all green. <laughs> we got a lot of challenges for you today. <laughs> Pick one. I'm just saying, use unnatural flesh tone. Right. Pick or, colors yeah. that you wouldn't think you would be using. Right. And you'll really yeah. be surprised. I'd actually results. really like to see some that are red, yellow, and orange. I'd really yeah. like to see those. That, that that's gonna. I'm I'm interested in that. I feel like that's gonna got a good a good Cezanne thing going forward. So yeah. I want to see that. Those are pretty solid colors yeah. to use. So send us some pictures of that. Yeah. At our email address, which Kevin knows, <laughs> which is info at articulatepodcast dot com, and yeah. you could even if you're watching this on. YouTube, or you're watching this on the website, you can post comments below. You can post your images below. You can subscribe to the channel over there. Somewhere. Whatever you want to do. If you like this, if you want more like this, hit that Any subscribe button, info? share with a friend, do whatever you want with mm -hmm. it. But if you have any challenges that you want thrown this way. Yeah. Or if you have an idea for something you'd like to hear us talk about. Yeah. And yeah. hit us up. Other than this. I'm sorry. I don't want to talk. About one that. more time. I had to do Gotta it one get more time. it in. All right. <laughs> Have a good time, folks. Right. See y'all later. That was a long one. You've been listening to Articulate with Kevin and Sean. Subscribe on iTunes or check them out on drawingandcoloring.com. Always reminding you to keep it simple.